for much of my childhood because my mother seemed to believe in it so much, especially when she cooked. But the kitchen wasn't the only thing that was smoky. Robinson ribbed over the record on Saturday nights while Oxygen re-ran comedies of Robin William. She was shout. Get my salon pro out my purse pouch, that black bottle with that red cap she snapped and I learned early that olive oil wasn't only for the pan. With her relaxer in one hand and burning hot comb in the other, she redefined what it meant to have secondhand smoke. Curling iron like she was a bodybuilder, all to build more body for her hair. She was addicted to getting more volume, never quite satisfied though with her plans, plan A. 
fix the do in whatever many styles in the morning while she stood in the mirror. Plan B, get that oral B toothbrush to brush them edges. Tread it and sew, don't get it twisted, get it twisted. She will be listening to B, don't get it twisted, get it twisted. Braid it, pick like NBA drafts too, and fro, pin double pin with that Indian, Malaysian, yaki wavy, Brazilian, dyed short chameleon like cause of how much it changes. Damn, my mama has so many hairstyles. <laughs> it was like mother nature, how much it changed, but nah, it was just the nature of my mother's hair. She let her curls go wild, I mean. Her hair was never the source of her self-worth. Her self-love was locked and rooted deeper than her scalp, but like Bobby, pinned Whitney in marriage, like her Bobby, pinned Whitney in marriage, she and her protein filaments were inseparable. Arasta's key couldn't begin to shed light on how she dreaded the day when it all fell down. But Selena and Kanye were there to make it sound better. See, doctors say mama got cells in her body growing faster than the ones in our prisons. Doctors say cells in mama's body about to make her pass in peace. And as quickly as she adopted Carol's daughter, she gave her back and orphaned her son, me. I guess when it rains, it pours. But mama say when it rains, that just really means something about to grow. Mama never sat straight back because she wasn't afraid to play her part. I mean, she never sat straight back because she wasn't afraid to play in her part. She, she knew. She knew that even though she wouldn't be able to tangle with the tangles in her brush for any longer, that she was balding sexier than Lisa Leslie. She balled harder than Lisa Leslie and rested more beautifully than Princess Aurora. Her aura beamed even in peace. She let her curls go wild. See those curls? Those curls were the epitome of the curl that she made with the corner of her lips when she smiled in the casket. I saw those kinky curls with a bouncing buoyancy of her personality. Those nappy and straightening back to nappy fibers were her strength because she was never conquered with a springing personality more than Jerry Curl was her resilience. She shined, she shined stronger than the sheen she sprayed. See, her curls went wild because she, she was just as free. Thank you. So if you want to introduce yourself real quick. Hi, everybody. My name is Leah Clark. I'm a senior in advertising major. Hi, guys. My name is Jamela. I'm a senior in accounting at ITIS. Hi, guys. I'm Bria, I'm a junior major in communication. Hi, I'm Jaina, and I'm a junior major in special education. Hello, I'm Courtney, I'm a sophomore, and I'm majoring in psychology. Hi, I'm Tia, I'm a junior major in marketing and management. Hi, I'm Rochelle, I'm a junior major in advertising. Okay, so we've seen that you all been tweeting and posting on Instagram, so we would like to give some, well actually a lot of this stuff away. Like
Um, but I'll just start off by diving right into my hair story. I have nothing prepared. I'm just freestyling like I do on my YouTube videos. <laughs> um, but I, I uh, fall back when I was a kid. Um, I actually grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Is Brooklyn in the house? Okay, two? All right, Brooklyn. Um, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and it was a predominantly black neighborhood. And I grew up with my white grandmother. She was Swedish, and she was as white as white could get. So she didn't really uh, know what to do with my hair. So every time I would go to school or go outside, people would definitely make fun of all of this. Because my peers, they actually had, uh, it was either straight and relaxed, or they had long extensions, braids, or they had their own hair braided up. So I didn't really see this growing up. Uh, so I didn't like it. I wanted to be like everyone else, and I begged my grandmother for a relaxer, and she finally gave it to me at the age of 12, and I was very happy. I was luxuriating in my long, straight, relaxed hair, um, and I was happy because now I look like everyone else, and that's what I wanted at the time. So fast forward to my early adulthood. Um, I went to college, and I started working part-time, and I actually started working at the Mac counter. And you know when you're at Mac, there's, you know, the big hair, the crazy makeup. So, you know, they allow their employees to kind of just be free with their hair and makeup as long as you wear black. And this girl, she came walking in, she was a freelancer, and she had this huge curly hair. So immediately I just went up to her and I asked her, I said, what salon did you go to? to get your hair like that? What kind of rollers did they use? What flexi rods? What kind of straw set is that? How long does it last? I asked her all of these questions and she just looked at me and she said, I didn't go to a salon. I washed my hair and let it dry. and This is how it is, naturally. So it didn't even occur to me that that, that was even her natural hair in the first place. This is because we didn't see this back then. And I was just blown away from that. So she actually inspired me to go home that night and give it a try. Because at the time, I was, uh, I was still relaxing, but it, it's been a while at that time. So I was really transitioning and didn't know that I was transitioning. And um, once I, I, I would go to the Dominican salon to get my hair, you know, wash and set and everything like that. So I didn't really wash my hair on my own. I was very ignorant to hair care. So I went home and I shampooed my hair and didn't even put any conditioner in it because I didn't know. I thought conditioner was an option. I didn't know it was a necessity for hair care. So I shampooed my hair, immediately got the blow dryer and just went crazy, crazy, crazy. I did get the big hair, but it didn't look like hers. It was a hot mess. but. That day definitely uh, inspired me to just quit relaxing my hair because I saw potential. You know, I saw a curl here or a wave here. Like, I saw my texture. So I was excited about that and I wanted to learn more. So that's what brought me to YouTube. Uh, back in 2009, I, you know, typed in curly hair tips and a few girls came up. We were like the OGs of. Uh, natural hair care back then because it was very few of us and you know Lexi with the curls anyone know Lexi yeah. Lexi with the curls popped up uh, Cabrina M Whitney natural uh, so many Nikki May all these girls popped up and I was just blown away I finally learned about conditioner number one number two you know the Denman brush the diffuser the stylers leave-in conditioner I had no clue so then I became obsessed. And I know a lot of you guys understand that obsession. Maybe some of you, when you first start, you just kind of dive in and you become product junkies and you want to try everything, especially to get a certain look. So I just opened up my webcam and on my laptop and just started journaling my hair journey from that point on. Had no idea what I was doing. I don't consider myself a guru and I didn't then, so I was basically just sharing with the world my ups and downs on my natural hair journey.
So it was all fun and games. I spent a lot of money on product. A lot of money. I wasn't getting free product back then. So I uh, spent a lot of money and I was so busy looking at the images in front of me that was, you know, the, these other women with these amazing afros and curls and kinks. And I was kind of blinded to what was going on right here. So I would become upset or sad or actually a little depressed that my hair didn't come out the way that I wanted it that day. Or I remember spending a whole day doing my hair about three times from start to finish because it needed to be perfect. I hated frizz. Um, all of that was just a mess for me. And after a while, I was okay, but it wasn't fun anymore. Natural hair was just way too exhausting for me uh, because again, I was chasing another image that wasn't my own. So I had to do something drastic to kind of get me out of that zone. And that's when I decided to big chop in 2011. Cut off all my hair, literally an inch or two long. Uh, cut off all my hair, it was actually longer than this. And it felt great. At first, you know, I was cute. I was cute with short hair. It was great, it was free. Um, you know, I had my texture, my real deal texture, no damage. And then my hair started growing. So then it became awkward. I don't know how many people big chopped in here, but any big choppers? Oh, whoa, okay. So how many are in the awkward stage where you just don't kind of, you don't feel cute anymore? Okay, <laughs> that's fair enough. You know, those in between stages, so you know you gotta feel your way through it and deal with it and improvise with accessories and all of this. But one thing about the process is you can't run away from the process once you start it. There's no way to run away from your big chop. Even if you cover it up with a wig, you still have your hair under there. So you gotta deal with it. So big chopping, going through that process has definitely taught me to respect the process. And not only just with my hair or with beauty, but with life in general. I actually became more of a patient person going through the big chop because I had to force myself to be patient and to deal with what I had. And it's definitely trickled down to every other aspect of my life because now I kind of cut the YouTube videos off and I, thought, I finally looked in the mirror and I was looking at my hair and I found myself using less and less product. I found myself being okay with the frizz every once in a while. I actually started to love the afro during my big chop because this was, would have been a bad hair day four years ago. I, wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have even came outside like this. And now I love this. So my whole perception just totally changed because I was less focused on the image outside of me and I was more focused on how I wanted to feel. It became less of about it became less about the look and more about, okay, I don't like the way this feels, so I want to feel like that. And while I focused on my feelings, I so much has grown within myself and outside of me because I realized doing this and sharing this on YouTube and doing events that it inspires a lot of people. And the, the woman at the counter, she has no idea that this is what she kind of created. She's kind of responsible for where I am today because she inspired me. And that was a regular day for her. And it was an amazing day for me of self-discovery that I didn't even know at that time. So I thank her. Even though she may be a follower, I have no idea. Wouldn't that be funny? But um, I thank her for that. And we all inspire everyone. When, when you are walking in your presence and, and being yourself, you don't know who you're inspiring. Because you, people will look at you and they say, I don't necessarily want to look like her, but I want to feel like her. I, want to, I, I like the way she is. I love her presence. I love her energy. And all of that comes with the, acceptance, with the acceptance that does come with making that decision. So that was huge for me. And it's funny because I read, I shared this on Facebook. I read an article uh, about a Dove survey where 84% of women, they did a global survey, 
Only 4% of women felt that they were truly beautiful. This is global. And I found that number to be very, very alarming and disturbing. And at the same time, about 4% only felt beautiful. 80% of women, period, felt that there, were be there was beauty in other women. So there's a lot of us sitting here that really don't appreciate our beauty and we're so focused on everyone else's beauty. And you know, you can look at the next person and just say there's something about her hair, her face, her body that I want. And your insecurities are exaggerated when you compare to anything, anyone else. It, it becomes laugh. You know, you, as someone can tell you that you're beautiful a hundred times during a day, but once someone says something negative about you, that's all you hear. And I think that's a human thing, but it's definitely exaggerated with being a woman. So what I say, and it's, it's easier said than done, but say, be, ki be kind to yourself. Um, say nice things to yourself. If you were to monitor your thoughts and someone on the outside of you regurgitated everything you were thinking about yourself, that person would be rude, <laughs> insensitive. Uh, you probably want to punch that person in the face. Like, you would not like that person. And we tend to forget that we are. We are that person on the inside. So we have to kind of just twist it around, be kind to ourselves, treat ourselves like we want to be treated by everyone else. Kind of invert that. And once you start doing that and becoming comfortable with being kind to yourself, you then do that with other people. If you see another woman and she has beautiful hair, beautiful skin, a nice shirt, and you think it, you should probably say it. And this really, really helps because it changes your whole entire mood. Because as humans, we want to help people. It makes us feel good when we make someone else feel good. So definitely speak it and continue to speak those thoughts in your head and everything else just falls into place, beauty-wise, self-esteem-wise, socially, everything. So yes, we're talking about hair, but it's not just about hair. Sometimes it starts with hair like it did for me uh, because it just unlocked so much of me to me revealed myself to myself, as I like to say, and I had no clue. So I would just say stay on that journey, continue to be inspired, continue to see other women's beauty, but definitely see yourself as beautiful. And the whole hair typing thing, and the kinky, and the curly, and the this, the long, I met someone here who said, and it's funny because this happens all the time when I see people and they're like, oh my god, I love you. And then they're like, I wish my hair was like yours. Or I wish it was as big as yours, or as long as yours, or as curly as yours, or how do I get an afro, and all of this. And I, I see myself, you know, and I'm like, you know, appreciate where you are. Appreciate where you are. Because someone else is looking at you, wishing that they had something that you had. So just kind of take, you know, take yourself away from the YouTube videos. I know we can get carried away but we definitely get carried away in other people's images. So look in the mirror, look at other women, see the beauty, and see the beauty in you. So that's it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> but I know that we have a panel discussion where we're definitely going to go and dig deeper into some other aspects of natural hair in the community and um, how it affects us. So I look forward to seeing you guys on the panel, and thank you.